peace. The kingdom of God is at hand. It is the 25th day of the second month in the year of our Lord, 2024. It's 1859 for anyone out there listening. This isn't a coincidence. My voice mounts the airs to share with you the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Days are tumbling one unto another as the weeds stand proud before they're torn and tossed into the flames. The chaos and cruelty of the wicked is everywhere, blaring on all stations, all channels, in the streets, depicting the vicious acts of defiance, witchcraft, violence, and lewdness. The lawless flaunt themselves to the malicious hiss of the rulers of darkness, all the while entertaining the principalities of evil in heavenly places. Soon, very soon, they will suffer an inevitable eternal slaughter without reprieve, for every rebellious soul will reap all that he has sown in hellfire forever. I was asked recently, what is the best gift anyone has ever given you? To which I answered, prayer. For the prayers of the righteous men availeth much with our Father. Amen. We are to pray always without ceasing. Jesus said to pray without losing heart and never give up trusting in God and his perfect timing. It is written in Isaiah 33:22, The Lord is our judge, our king, and he will save us. Those of us who remain vigilant in the worship of the Lord must come before the throne of grace with boldness, for God has said that he even he blots out our sins for his name's sake, that we can contend with him, stating our case and being acquitted. This acquittal is because we are the children of God, born from above by the word of God and the blood of the Holy Lamb shed for us that we are no longer subject to the law of sin and death. Amen. Psalm 100 through 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Hallelujah. God says in Isaiah 43, 26, put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. I, only I, am he who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Remind me of your merits with a thorough report. Let us plead and argue our case together. State your position that you may be proved right. Wow, that you may be proved right. Are you hearing what our Father is saying? He wants a thorough report when we enter into his courts, praising him. We are to bring our case to him. Here, when you go to court on earth in this world, you have to have documents, something to prove your case. If it's an inheritance, you need a will. If it's a criminal case, you need witnesses. You need receipts, time cards, stamps, something to prove your innocence before a jury, a judge. 
1 John 2, 1. John writes, My little children, these things I write to you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Meaning Jesus represents and intercedes for humans, pleading for mercy and forgiveness for their sins based on his sacrificial death and resurrection. He is our attorney, if you will. Hebrews 4, 13 through 16 tells us that nothing is hidden from God, that we have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession of faith, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand with our weaknesses and temptations, but one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human, in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. Therefore, with privilege, approach the throne of grace, come before God, the throne of God's gracious favor with confidence, without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find amazing grace to help in time of need. Just a blessing is such a blessing, and Father's timing is always perfect. Hebrews 11 1 tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, evidence of things not seen. So when we come before God, and we stand before the throne of grace, we praise him, we sing praises to him, we bless his holy name, and we know that we are there with Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ himself. And our faith is our evidence. So when you pray before God, you need to state your case. Tell him why you are asking and on what grounds, what merits that you were proved right. There is a manner in which we must stand before our Lord, our King, our Judge, our Father, and it is always with great praise and presentation. We don't say, I want, give me, give me, without expressing our reason, our privileges as his children, our innocence, and why we should hope to expect such favor for we have a witness within us, and that is the Holy Spirit, which testifies with us that we are the children of God. So we have our attorney, which is Jesus Christ. Okay. We have our evidence, which is our faith. And we have our witness, which is the Holy Spirit. And when you have those things, you can come before the throne of grace with confidence, okay, knowing in advance that you are going to be acquitted, for there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. As an example, of a time when I stood before the throne of grace and stated my case. I was weary of going to the cancer center, tired of all the drips, the motions, the scans, the jabs, the hours of long sessions, and remarks from the oncologist staff about how I was being kept alive by the toxic therapies. I wept to my father, saying, I know the truth. Jesus died for my sins. He carried my sicknesses, and by his stripes I 
am healed. I have learned my lesson. I repented, Father. I should not and do not want to go to that place any longer. I am healed by the blood of my Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son, my Lord. Father, I see no reason to have to continue with these treatments. I have turned from my wicked ways, repented, and have been born again, a new creature. Old things passed away, and all things have become new. It's not I that live, but Christ in me I wept. And I wept, and I wept, speaking the perfect will and truth of my Father. That was my case, which I stated. That was my case as I knelt and stood before the throne of grace, crying that day, that hour. And not long after that prayer, it was during an immunotherapy drip, the Lord spoke to me, rise, leave this place, you do not belong here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I obeyed. Walking away from treatment for a diagnosis of stage 4 metastatic lung cancer which spread to my brain accompanied by emphysema, having been given a six-month prognosis to live. My oncologist did not agree with my decision, but within a few weeks after a scan showed no evidence of pestilence, his words were, it's a miracle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is written that we believers overcome Satan by the blood of the Holy Lamb, Jesus Christ, and our testimony when standing before the throne of grace encompassed by so great a crowd of witnesses, one of which being the accuser, Satan, and we love not our lives unto death. Okay, this is the angels talking about us believers in Revelations 12, 11. They overcame and conquered him, who's him, Satan, because of the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when facing death. Let that sink in for a moment. Okay, that's how we conquer. Okay, who? Satan. By the blood of the Holy Lamb, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and our testimony. Okay, holding strong and fast to our faith, which is the evidence our evidence, okay? Things that you can't see. It's our faith, even when facing death. Father has given us not the spirit of fear, but of power. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead on the third day, the Holy Spirit, which quickens our flesh. He has also given us the spirit of love and sound mind, the mind of Christ. Hallelujah! Rejoice! For we are loved and called to love and to testify of the truth. Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm smiling. My cheeks are aching this moment. I'm smiling so much for those of you who have ears to hear. Fear not, for those who are in the Lord are one spirit with Him. For as He is, so are we in this world. Pray continually 
and enter into the courts of our Lord with singing and praises and all boldness, stating your case with faith, knowing that greater is he that's in you than Satan who is in the world. Ask that you may receive with all thankfulness that your joy may be full, giving all glory to God through his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. just wanted to share that with all of you. When you stand praying, praise the Lord and bless his holy name because he is so good. There is none good but God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember when the rich man asked Jesus, what must I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? It's important to be obedient to God, to be innocent. Yes, if you sin, repent. Okay? Repent. Change. Ask for forgiveness and sin no more. Don't think that you are good. Never accept that if somebody says that. Never call yourself, I'm a good person. Even Jesus would not accept that. Jesus said, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. So it's important when you go before the throne of grace before God that you are innocent you are innocent is very important you, you don't I think a lot of prayers don't get answered for people because they're not living right they're not they haven't surrendered to the Lord fully wholly you know you cannot for instance, be in a, an unholy relationship with someone fornicating and then saying a prayer like, God, make this person want to be with me. And if you're already sinning, do you understand what I'm saying? We have to be innocent. And, and Father is merciful. Okay, what Jesus has done for us, we can be forgiven when we make a mistake. And he forgives us and he blots out our sins and remembers them no more. So that when we stand before his throne praying, we can receive his unmerited favor, his love and, and his grace <laughs> and that's so important um, I really think that the what's going on today a lot of people don't understand that one must be in obedience to God yes God is love yes he loves you yes Jesus has died for the sins of the world and yes, he has given us free will, but that free will does not mean um, to continue to sin as much as you want, believing that you're you're going to be saved just because you believe in Christ. Even the demons believe, okay? And we all know where they're going, right? So, and you know there is scripture that says, 
for those that sin willfully. Willfully, meaning you've heard the word and you know the truth. You know Jesus Christ. You know what he's done. And you're going to go and you're going to do something really awful anyway. There is no sacrifice for such. Okay? So it's very important. Yes, we we'll, we mess up. Sin oftentimes is even worrying. That's a sin. We're not to worry. We're commanded to be anxious for nothing. Okay? We are to give all of our worries, all of our concerns, all of our cares to the Lord because He cares for us and He loves us. And so many, so, so many would be healed, healed spiritually, just knowing this truth. And the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, he loves you so much. And just just thanking him and loving him and and giving yourself to him okay all of you he wants every part of you he doesn't want half of your mind and half of your body and half of your you know he wants everything okay you are his creation now you can choose To do as you will, but ultimately, God's will is what stands. And so many people don't understand how and what a privilege it is to pray. You cannot participate in sinful behavior and expect that God is listening until you've repented and the Bible clearly teaches us that, you know, if you do not repent, then your prayers are an abomination and God will not hear. But for those of you who love the Lord, who are born again, come singing before the throne of grace, worshiping our Lord. <laughs> and state your case and remain vigilant our lord is coming very very soon hallelujah <laughs> oh, jesus loves you and so do i <laughs>